What is the best exercise on guitar? Well, obviously the one that improves as many areas of your playing as possible. So if I can make my right hand picking more fluid, improve my left hand accuracy, and improve my fretboard knowledge while learning a new scale all in one exercise, that just might be the best exercise ever. So how do I improve my technique while really learning a new scale in detail? Well, remember, learning a new scale is more complicated than just memorizing the pattern once. You need to really have it ingrained in your head so you can fluidly play around it as you improvise. I have three amazing exercises that we'll learn that help solidify any scale pattern that we know, but we're going to learn them with this amazing scale called the Altered Scale. After I quickly go over the scale and how the exercises work, you can play along with this great guitar warm-up exercise and use this video each day to improve your playing. So first things first, what is the Altered Scale and how do I use it? Basically, the Altered Scale is best used as a five chord, just a really, really outside sound that brings us back into a one chord. So if I'm in my key of A minor, and I go to my five chord, and I want the five chord just to be really distant, so I'll do like an E7 sharp nine. Right, that's a really tense, dissonant sound. And over that chord, I could play the altered scale that's really gonna sound nice and resolve back in A minor. And of course, it would be the E altered scale. So let's find that E altered scale right now, starting on this E right here in the fifth position. So learning that scale up and down is just the first step, and even that can be a decent exercise, a good little warm up, especially when you're just learning the scale, right? Just going up it and reminding yourself and getting familiar with where the notes are in this pattern. But the next thing we need to do to really solidify this pattern into our fingers, and the first exercise is a little sequence, okay? So we go up four notes, and then we go back two, so we go right where we started from, up one. Right, back two. And it just creates a sequence of four notes that just gradually move up one note at a time, and you have this whole pattern. And I can go all the way up and back down, and one thing I want to do with this exercise, when I get to the very top note right here, I want to hit that again. So if I think about it coming from right here... Right, just to make it nice and even, I want to get to that top note and start the whole thing back down the other way around. Now one thing we want to pay attention to to make sure we're doing this exercise as good as possible and really improve our technique is to make sure every note is nice and full and connected to the next one. And that's a little bit of the trick as we're moving our fingers around. So as I'm doing this pattern... Right? That's good, we want the notes connected, we don't want it like this. Now that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but there's always like one note, especially when you're moving across strings, where it could be a little bit short or whatever. We just want to pay attention to that. And the next thing we could pay attention to is where our right hand is, right? Where the pick is. We don't want to be picking from all the way up here and have that far attack. You know, I don't want that. I want to be as close as possible so I could be as accurate and smooth and have a really nice solid attack. You can see even right here, like, my pick is touching the string, and just to start like that, but I want it to close. And of course, alternate picking is a great way to start, just nice and even. We're really just working on keeping this fluid motion and trying to focus on that. Alright, so if you're just learning the scale and you try that out, you'll realize that you really have to rack your brain about where the next notes are, and it just really just pushes you to really think about the scale, and you learn it so much stronger. So now the next thing that we want to do is play it in thirds, right? So that's basically every other note, and this helps out with picking really nicely because we're just skipping between strings a lot. So with this pattern, if that's the first three notes, I'm going right here to the next one, and then back. So 
lot of one note per string thing, and this is really a little bit trickier on the uh, on the picking end, but also thinking about where the scale pattern is and enhancing more of that fretboard knowledge and really ingraining the scale all over again. And of course, when we get to the top, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna play that top note twice and continue the pattern back down just like this. This last exercise is the trickiest one because it really just breaks up the scale in the perfect way so we could really see it in depth. And basically what we're doing is breaking down triads and we're just playing each triad across the scale. So if I were to take this E altered scale and break up all the triads, it would look like this. It would start with E diminished. And then our next triad would be F minor. And then our next one would be G minor. And then our next triad would be A flat augmented. Yeah. And then B flat major. And then C major. And then D diminished. All the way until we finish back at the uh, E diminished. And of course, in this pattern, we continue on, we could fit in one more triad, the F, the F minor. And then we would go back down, right? Now, whenever I'm looking at scales, I always want to start with the two most common places that I would use them. So of course, if I'm thinking A minor, naturally, I'm gonna be around the fifth fret, right? Like, of course, I'm gonna play this A minor pentatonic shape. So I wanna know the E altered around there so I could play something that leads into that scale pattern. So my other common position that I would play in, if I'm thinking A minor, would be the 12th fret right here with the root on the A string, right? So I wanna find the E altered scale in this position as well, right here around the 12th fret. And this is what that pattern looks like. And of course from there, I'll figure out the exact same things that I just did with this other pattern. What is the sequence? How do I fit that into this pattern? How do I find it in thirds? And then how do I find all the triads? Now I wanna sit down and figure that out and and just do the work, man, do the work. And it's really gonna help you just unlock these patterns and know it really, really well. So by the time you wanna start improvising with them, you're just gonna know exactly what to do. And you can play some pretty dope licks too. Like even with these sequences and these patterns, you could create some licks out of that and it could sound pretty cool. So with each of these exercises, I'm gonna start with eighth notes, just nice and even. One and two and three and four. Right, just nice and even, that's easy. But then right after that, we're gonna go into triplets, which is a little bit trickier, and we wanna be able to catch that difference, right? We wanna keep fluid with our rhythm, but go from even eighth notes to triplets. And it might sound something like this. One and two and three and a four and a... <laughs> just, just to give you a vibe, we're not gonna go that crazy. We're gonna finish the exercise for with eighth notes and then go right into it with triplets and go between it. I'll have guitar profiles available for my Patreon supporters so they could choose whatever tempo they want and they could play along with it so they could really just go at their own pace and improve and make it faster and better and better and better. But other than that, you can play along with this video as well. Follow along with the tab at the bottom. Take it slow, take it slow. Just figure it out first and then practice it every day and I swear you're gonna get better and better.
forget to check out my new course, Intro to Modern Neo Soul Rhythm Guitar, now available for all Patreon supporters. This course has just so much. It's got a 24 page book. It's a big book with a bunch of different exercises, six different sections, almost an hour's worth of instruction. You gotta check this out. It's the greatest thing ever and it's gonna help you out for any beginner or intermediate player who's just getting into Neo Soul. Check it out at patreon.com. Keep jamming and stay nasty.